excited or not? Today on the vlog, I'm extremely excited to show you from beautiful Tuscany, a Yamaha XSR 900. Yesterday, riding the most beautiful roads here, and today, very well at 6 a.m., I took it for a ride just by myself. I was in between cruising and enjoying the views and looking around, watching the sunrise in in a place like this, and it been wanting to play with a bike, wanting to push it a little bit further because I'm, I'm, I start getting used to it. I start getting used to its power and it's so easy, so effortless. It is so forgiven. What Yamaha did with this extremely well, they combined a heritage and a custom look with a top technology. It's nothing more you could wish from a street bike. Seriously, it is absolutely nothing more you could want from the street bike. And so the XSR 900 is really the most, uh, let's say, purest version of sport heritage that we have. This is the highest performing sport heritage machine we have with really incredible road going performance. Uh, but also we wanted to respect that performance not try and put on a, a soft 60s inspired roadster image onto this machine but respect that this is a full bore road going 900 cc motorcycle and the performance that comes with that means that the image should also be reflected so when we talk about icons for us at yamaha something which is truly a legendary uh, item is the delta box chassis so this is an aluminium chassis which in 1982, when uh, some of our ingenious engineers arrived at the uh, GP Championship in Salzburg, brought with them a new chassis, which revolutionized racing. An aluminum beam frame, which wrapped from the headstock down to the swing arm pivot. This is uh, making the strongest, the lightest chassis possible at the time, and uh, revolutionized racing in, the mo in that time. And mean, Within two years, fine tuning, refining, we were winning championships in 84, 86, 88. It was a fantastic period for Yamaha. And uh, with the XSR 900 you see in front of you, this is a Delta Box style chassis. And it's an evolution of the Delta Box chassis. It's, it's, it's not actually a Delta Box chassis because the frame is no longer a box. As you can see, the, the back side of the chassis is an open casting, it's a web. This is even lighter, even stronger, even uh, more efficient than a Delta Box chassis, but we imitate the style to pay homage and reference to the past. to the old XSR 900 is uh, 55, uh, sorry, 60 millimeters longer, creating a 55 millimeter longer wheelbase. Sounds like a big number and a big jump, but we wanted to add a new character to the way that the XSR 900 rides. That coupled with the new suspension setup that we have means that the whole package is more controlled. It's still extremely agile. It is still a very fun bike to ride, but it just has a, a little more foundation, a little more solid feeling beneath you. And the braking package as well. 
there's no room for retro breaks when you have uh, the kind of performance that this package delivers. So full four pot, uh, twin caliper, twin 298 millimeter discs. We actually employ a Brembo radial master cylinder as well, just to give more consistent feeling at the lever, uh, more consistent uh, pressure actuation and feel for the rider. So they're able to have as much confidence as possible when they're uh, pushing on. We've reduced the weight of the bike by two kilos, not only in the actual baseline figure of the bike, 93 kilograms, previously 195. That's fully fueled with oil, with air in the tires, with a battery, no funny games. This is how it is. But also in how the bike feels, the lighter wheels, the uh, changes to the, uh, to the axles, we're reducing the inertia in the steering and in the way that the wheels spin up and slow down. The bike reacts quicker to, how you, uh, to your inputs and this is only something that gives you more confidence when riding. I am 1 meter 75 centimeters tall and the bike fits me perfectly. I can reach the ground very comfortably, stand with both feet. The bike is so light and so well balanced that it's very, very easy to control a hell of a lot of power that it has. This road down the hill on the gravel I was really worried about because normally I don't ride on the gravel especially the road tires especially the naked bike so I was really worried if that will be slippery if that will be too tall for me and I will not feel confident and comfortable riding but when the bike fits you and when it's light even in stable conditions when you go slow speed and the road surface is not perfect you feel a lot more confident in terms of the design itself, it, we wanted to start with this idea um, coming from these uh, classic race bikes where you're sat in the bike, not on the bike. Uh, not to be locked into a position, but just to give a feeling of comfort and integration on the machine. So it stands still, you're sat between the tank and the tail, you're down, you have two feet on the floor, and you're very relaxed and it's very accessible. When riding, my knees fits nicely in the cuts where it belongs and I can I can feel the tank I can feel the bike I can feel like one with a bike The heart of the bike, our uh, 890cc CP3 engine. We worked hard, not really to increase the power. The changes to the engine finally gave us some more power, but we were focusing on the mid-range, on the uh, yellow line in the middle between four and 8,000 RPM, that, that working area of the bike where you can stay in one gear, third or fourth on the roads, and just wind the throttle on and off, and it will always respond and pick up to how you need but also it's a more efficient engine. We understand with the price of fuel, for sure, this is becoming more of a problem. So you get more, uh, more uh, go for uh, each liter of fuel um, with a big increase in the efficiency of the engine. And the engine itself, uh, yeah, it's a fully modern engine. A lot of the technology that comes from our R1, from our super sport uh, activity, uh, goes directly into our road bike engines. So it's deeply embedded with new performance technology which creates this efficiency, it creates the performance. I would compare this bike with Z1000. I'd compare it with Brutale and I'd compare it with BMW R90. To me that bike felt like a mixture between BMW R90 and MV Augusta Brutale for example. The full naked and the sports heritage. It's a heritage bike but we do not want to take away any of the functionality. And this means that we build the bike around our inertial measurement unit, an IMU. So it's measuring acceleration in six axes, how the bike is moving upright, in cornering, accelerating, decelerating. Uh, and it's working with our Rider Aids package, traction control, lift control, um, slide control, and the cornering ABS. 
at all times, measuring more than 125 times a second to modify how the throttle inputs are, uh, are reaching the road. Same with the throttle delivery. Uh, four different power modes to allow uh, you to choose how you like the bike to respond. And all of this is managed through a three and a half inch TFT screen. Crisp, clear, easy to see, very high contrast. So it's a bright day, you can easily see what's going on. The quick shift is employed for both up and down. So you have uh, auto blip on the downshift as well. Keeps the bike very stable. You don't have to touch the clutch once you've pulled away. You can uh, leave it there and just play with the uh, gear shift up and down. Equally, assist and slip clutch. So it's a light to pull at the lever. It's uh, easier and more consistent to engage and it helps keep the bike stable as you're going into a corner under braking and downshifting. As you could expect from the heritage, sports heritage motorcycle, it does have a kickstarter. It's a little bit high, so not extremely comfortable to kick, but... Good, isn't it? Sound, super important point. It's uh, the noise of a bike can define the riding experience. And uh, equally now we have to understand that there are certain areas in Europe where you cannot ride a bike if it is louder than 95 decibels. So uh, it's kind of important to give the rider as much of a unique riding uh, sound experience, but at the same time respecting the environment surrounding. So we focus on the intake noise as well. This is the most important point for the rider. We have a unique airbox design, three unequal length uh, inlets leading into the airbox, different lengths, different cross sections, and the tuned harmonics of these pipes uh, means that the, the noise you get out is, uh, is something which really gives you goosebumps as you go up through the rev range. As you go faster, the noise that's hitting you is predominantly coming from the airbox, not from the exhaust. And so this means the rider can enjoy it, but without disturbing those around. Guys, I was kidding about the Kickstarter. That is cleverly hidden passenger foot pegs. some questions of the Yellow Beanie Club. BC. That's a bike builders club yeah. as well. Yeah. I'm not in the camera guys because um, I don't belong to Yellow Beanie Club yet. I want to ask you about the bikes that we had out today. Sure. You build it? Yes. yes. <laughs> do you have any plans? What do you think to build of it? Because it's a heritage model already. I will some it has later. some things that probably would be alcohol? a shame to change. Ah, yes. Yes. Do you have any ideas after riding it today? Yeah. It was my first time riding it. Um, I, I'm very impressed by it. It was so fun riding everywhere. Finally! Yeah. It's been a long week. It's beautiful. Uh, and I'm really impressed by the performance of the bike. That's the only model I know. But that's the one we're building. Um, I'm trying to find a photo of what we're trying to do. But still following the 80s the... Um, the styling. So you will keep the 80s. Yes, yes. Through it, yes. Through it. And we're going to focus no. more on no. race bike culture and just I will be, I will be devastated. diving into that. So yeah. it's exciting for me because I get to learn more I, uh, about I, this is my, uh, 80s uh, racing. <laughs> right? <laughs> and, um, yeah. I can't show anyone. Yeah. It's performing so perfectly. Uh, 
I don't, for a road, I think the road bike. I knew you were good. Be I loved your like, stuff. That, that's the feeling I had I after today. Aren't you scared to lose that while building? Because that was my first thought. I was thinking, okay, I will change the handle and that. But then again. So, it was designed to be like this. Well, it's a very well-rounded motorcycle. Quite honestly, I would ride it as is. But yeah. I was diving into racing culture. We started talking to a couple of people that are very, very experienced in that world. And for us, yes, it's going to be less comfortable, but the point is, how can we make it faster at the track okay, so performance? You, yes, so you're increasing performance. I want to increase performance. Um, what that looks like yet, or what that looks like is yet to be figured out. Would you like to do exercise? Tell me it's, yeah. I am really, uh, it's better or worse. I'm always going to say, thinking yeah, about uh, it. So that means that, that sometimes it's less practical. It needs to be, I'm, I'm, you know, it needs to be good. I'll probably end up having a reputation of a YouTuber who's doing reviews and falls in love, absolutely falls in love with every single bike. But is it my fault that they keep releasing the bikes better and better every single year? And it is so hard to do not want it in your garage and to do not want it as a next project on my ramp with this particular one. This trip I chose single layer Pandomoto jeans mainly because these are the coolest jeans that I have coolest in the way not just because they are really cool but because they are quite cooling in summer and I decided to mention it in this episode because I met quite a few people including the Yamaha crew riding and loving Pandomoto and we had quite a few conversations of how good these jeans are 